Hi guys and welcome to a very short tutorial on using the financial calculator which is nothing but the BA2 plus calculator by Texas Instruments which is mostly used in the CF exams and also in the RM exams okay and we're going to be using the BA2 plus calculator specifically to calculate present value of course you can refer to other videos that will be coming up with for finding out various other answers so initially let me just take up a very easy question and then we move on into a difficult question which probably will require multiple calculations so first i'm going to be taking up a very simple question like this which says that you bought a house in the year 2016 which is worth about 1.5 million dollars in 2021 the property is appreciated at a rate of six percent annually and what is the price that you buy it right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up the emulator so we can see here that the future value of this house that you bought in 2016 is worth 1.5 million dollars that means the value 1.5 million dollars is actually the future value so let's get started with putting in the values 1.5 million dollars okay so after putting in the values then you go ahead and press fv which is future value now make sure that since we're talking about future value we are talking in terms of redemption that means we're assuming that probably we will sell this property off that's the reason why the sign is positive okay so present value and future value has to be actually in opposite signs which basically shows whether you've invested or whether you've redeemed okay as you can see we've got a rate so you have to be careful out here that you don't really have to put six percent all you need to do is just press the number six and then just press i by y okay i by y is nothing but interest or yield that is what the sign signifies okay so once you've done that now we know that between 2016 and 2021 the number of years are five okay so i'm going to press five and then i'm going to press n which shows basically the number of years of compounding all right now of course we are trying to find out at what price did we buy in 2016 which is basically the past tense so in a sense we are trying to find out the present value or the amount we invested initially right however we also have something called as the pmt nothing but payment uh, which is nothing but recurring payments during a specific period which of course we don't have any values out here so we're going to just press zero and press pmt now even if you do not put zero in pmt by default it's going to take value as zero okay but just for the purpose of tutorial i'm still explaining okay now you got to find the pv so all you got to do is press the button cpt which is nothing but compute and then press pv and there's your answer this is nothing but 1.120 million okay now let's try to look at a little tricky question then compared to a very simple straightforward question now you can see here this is a more complicated question which says that you plan to retire in 20 years and after that you plan to draw out your savings that means after retirement you intend to withdraw almost hundred thousand dollars annually the savings account post retirement is expected to give you three percent that means post you retire and while you are withdrawing $100,000 every year, your account is expected to give you 3% annual return. Assume that this is an assumption. Okay. However, pre-retirement, your investments can generate approximately about 9%. That means before you reach the period of retirement, initially you're expected to generate 9% annually. Okay. Now your life expectancy post-retirement is expected to be about 20 years. How much should you save every month to reach your goals? A very typical question in terms of retirement planning and probably can also be used when you're trying to plan your own retirement. Okay. So now before you jump into such calculations with the calculator directly, you need to first figure out the approach of solving this question. And the best part is to just put in the data and try to divide the question into phase. One is post-retirement and in post-retirement, let's start putting in the data. So the first data we have is that post-retirement will be withdrawing $100,000. Now you need to be careful with the signs because you are withdrawing. So PMT is going to be negative in your calculation. The second data that you have is that post-retirement, your life expectancy is about 20 years, which means N becomes 20. Okay. The third is you are not going to be planning to save anything. You don't want to leave anything at the end on your account. So hence, we are assuming the future value is going to be zero. If let's say the question has said that probably we want to also leave out this amount of money for my heirs or my inherited, whatever it is, then the value would have changed. 
But in this case, there's no such assumption. So we are assuming future values to be zero. Next, the I by Y, which is nothing but the interest that you're going to get post retirement for about 20 years is going to compound at 3%. So we have more or less all the data available in the first phase, right? So what do we don't have? So we don't have the present value. Okay. So first, don't jump into conclusions. Let's just try to bifurcate the amount of data that is available here. Okay, let's look at pre-retirement now. What is the data that you have in pre-retirement? So first is, do you have a PMT? Well, PMT is what exactly you're trying to calculate, right? How much money do you really want to save every month so that you reach your goals of the first phase that we discussed? Now, let's look at the second assumption that again, pre-retirement also, we've got about 20 years. What is the future value that we want to reach? Well, we don't have that value, right, at this stage. And what is the PV? Initially, when we are starting with this uh, savings scheme, we don't have any investments. So hence, PV is zero. Now, I by Y is given as 9% because pre-retirement, we are assuming that we can make and we can take a slightly higher risk and generate about 9%. All right? Now, you can clearly see in both the cases that data is sufficient in post-retirement case right? because we can solve for post-retirement first rather than pre-retirement because pre-retirement has a lot of empty data available here. Right. So let's look at the calculation first. Now let's try to feed in the data of the first phase. So let's see what we have. We have about N is 20. So let's press 20 and then press N. Then we've got PMT. Remember, we want to withdraw this. So what we're going to do is first, we're going to write the 100,000 value out here, put a negative sign and then put it as PMT. So our PMT is also entered. Our N per is also entered. My future value is zero. So I'm going to press zero and then press future value. Right. My I by Y is three. So I'm going to press three and press I by Y. And now all I need to do is try to print out the present value. So I'm going to press compute, and press PV. So it says about 1.487 million. Okay. So that is nothing but the amount of value that we need to reach in the second phase of the question. If you see what is the goal of pre-retirement saving 1.487. That is what we found out in the first phase. Okay. So 1.487 becomes the future value for the next part of the question, okay? And for which we need to find out how much should we save per month, which is nothing but PMT. Now, before you remove this value and then you know, get into the calculation again, my suggestion is to use the same value, okay? So just use the same value and select future value. There you go. So now your present value has become future value. Now my I by Y is about 9%. But remember now, we are trying to calculate per month values, right? So we need to convert everything on a monthly basis. Again, you don't really need to do this calculation separately. All you need to do is divide 9 by 12. That gives you 0.75% and just click I by Y. There you go. So that's my I by Y. And now since we're talking about N per being 20, now N per being 20 means nothing but 240 months. I'm just, uh, I'm just going to write 240 and press N, right? Then my future value is also already entered. My N is already entered. My PV is zero. So I'm just going to press zero as PV. And what do I need to find? I need to find the PMT. So there you go. So, so if a person needs to have the capability of withdrawing 100,000 after 20 years, provided that the person receives 3% interest annually, and the person needs to start saving at $2,227 per month at an interest of 9% annually, but compounded monthly. Okay, so that's how you solve a complicated question. It's, it's less about the calculator, it's more about how you think about the question, but you can also save some time by not trying to put in values again and again, which basically makes the answer more accurate in that sense. So that's how you calculate present value and future value calculations using TAB2 plus calculator. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye -bye.